Hello and welcome to this lecture on Ambai's uh, Kitchen in the Corner of the House. Uh, the thematic uh, foray that uh, I am considering uh, in this story is a patriarchal culture and how it is played out in this short fiction. So uh, in our previous session, we talked about uh, the metaphor of the octopus. And uh, let me remind you about uh, the signification of this particular sea uh, creature. What does the octopus stand for? Uh, the octopus stands for male authority. It also stands for women's authority. And it also represents uh, the victims or also women. So uh, men um, enact their power in uh, you know uh, octopus like through their influence over uh, women and women once again uh, internalize um, patriarchy and once again they become oppressors of uh, vulnerable women who are beneath them who are their inferiors who are their subordinates so it's like a hierarchy where power seeps down from the top and the top being the men's authority so it's a very very uh, interesting metaphor that uh, Ambai utilizes in this uh, particular context because there are so many different ideas uh, can be expressed through this octopus like image and the idea of strangulation is very very interesting uh, the way um, the spirit of um, the victims are uh, is suffocated is clearly brought out through this particular image so uh, the next major uh, character portrayed um, that we get in this uh, short story is Veena Mousies. Uh, uh, she is a, a relative of uh, Kishin. Uh, in fact, Veena is uh, Kishin's aunt. And uh, it's her uh, uh, life story that we get uh, in, this particular, uh, uh, in this particular short fiction. And it's an interesting digression, I would say. In fact, um, Ambai digresses uh, um, in order to bring in this particular character um, uh, in the story because she doesn't have any uh, narrative function to play. in this particular story and and that, that's why I call uh, her character portray, portrayed as a uh, digression. So uh, why does she digress? We will talk about the implication of the digression in a minute. But let's look at the context of Veena Mousy and she is a widow at 15 and uh, at 50 she is a primary school teacher and um, she has her home uh, on the garden of the school grounds itself the owners of the school allow her to stay on campus and she is this isolated figure who lives on the school so it's an interesting um, narrative uh, you know uh, presence that she has in this particular story and even the fact that she shares uh, her profession space and her domestic space again is very very uh, significant how the professional life also uh, blends into her domestic um, side too so this is uh, the uh, uh, na natural description that we have uh, um, for Veena. Uh, in fact, uh, this uh, is the description of her home. An Ahsoka tree stood in front of the house and behind the kitchen, a chumpak tree with its creamy flowers and yellow stems. Flower laden creepers entered through her windows freely. In the evenings, all the neighboring children would come to visit their teacher. Otherwise, there was the coil song uh, from the Ahsoka tree. So, this is a description of the exterior uh, aspect of her home and interestingly we do not get a description of the interiors of that small home on the school grounds so even the exterior has a lot of symbolic signification that i will uh, um, uh, uh, analyze uh, in a minute so we have um, two trees so the home is set amidst nature 
and look at the way the creepers entered through her windows freely. Um, that adverb is also very, very uh, significant in the context of the notion of freedom for women. So um, there is liberty in the context of Vina uh, Mossi and um, this freedom is not available to the women in Papaji's big household and uh, you need to recall the beginning of the story where we are told that the women of um, this household cannot look at the green mountains from the space of the uh, kitchen and that's a big drawback in terms of this spiritual uh, aspect uh, and in terms of their um, idea of uh, freedom spiritual freedom and here we have this widowed woman enjoying um, her uh, life amidst nature so we, we uh, are given a study in contrast in relation to this particular character and um in the evenings, uh, it is mentioned that the children of the neighborhood visit her and if the children don't come, there is the song of the coil, the bird, uh, which gives her company. So we have this figure who is almost um, cradled in the lap of nature and that's a, 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 that gives her a sensation of liberty which the other women of Papaji's house do not have the luxury of. Okay, so as I said, she is surrounded by lush nature, uh, with, uh, nature that gives her lots of flowers. And again, uh, it is mentioned that she has free will. She has the liberty of movement and that's very, very important as well. And this seems to be restricted in the case of the other women that we looked at uh, in the context of Papaji's home. So uh, it, it, it is mentioned that whenever she wanted to go to the market, she would uh, just take a walk. And that is a uh, uh, that is liberty in a, a big way, um, and uh, and that is given to Vina Mossi. And we need to remember that there is no male presence in her domesticity in fact she is the uh, she is the only one in her family which is why she has that free will and um even though Weena uh, claims that she has no authority uh, over anybody, uh, she has this uh, big responsibility of uh, nurturing the young, educating the young children who come to visit her, often whom she teaches at the school also. So um, this is an important uh, uh, stopover, if I can use that word, for Ambai in her narration of this particular tale because she just offers a, a, a female character who is at liberty to enjoy the beauty of nature, who enjoys the company of the creatures uh, in nature, who teaches young children who can walk freely and that's because she is a widow with no male control uh, over her movements or over her lifestyle. Now, um, further description is also very interesting in the context of understanding her, uh, her lifestyle and the narrator says that if she put a charpoy under the Ashoka tree, she would share the companionship of the coil and its calling voice until her longing ceased. In the early mornings, the white flowers would touch a touching distance the minute she opened her door. and. Um, so, uh, as I said, while she does have a lot of uh, um, uh, nature and its aspects as company, uh, there is a, a, a missing element in her lifestyle and um, that is indicated through this uh, 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 word, longing. Uh, what is she longing for? Um, that, that's, a, that's a question that we can ask. So, she does enjoy uh, the trees, she enjoys the flowers, it's, it's white flowers and white flowers flowers again is very indicative of um, the purity of, of um, heart of Vina Mossi or uh, the, the, the widowed status white uh, symbolizing again the widowed status. Uh, so all these are very symbolic and uh, you know, she is at a very close uh, communion with nature but she longs for something else and is that companionship is that human companionship is that children of her own so all these are questions that we can speculate on. 
So as soon as she reached open spaces, something in her moved towards the earth. Her nipples and womb became as stone, heavy, pulling her down, descending, descending, descending to the earth in surrender, forcing her to stand stock still, her feet buried deep. So again, um, it, this passage is also very uh, significant um, in the context of the story as I mentioned. So all these uh, statements and description of nature do not have a, a, a massive role to function in terms of pushing the plot along or having any kind of impact on the lifestyle of the other characters in the story such as Meenakshi or you know, the other daughters-in-law or the mother-in-law or n nobody in, in the story is affected by the lifestyle of um, this particular widow uh, Veena Mossi and um, the fact that Ambai invests uh, a, a little bit of uh, energy on her uh, suggests that she's kind of experimenting um, with a, a, a different sort of character to the ones we have seen in Papaji's household, a character who is alone, uh, who has a lot of freedom but she is um, not very happy and it's very clear that uh, this particular description uh, which talks about her moving out of doors is uh, symbolic of a different kind of meaning um, in terms of her presence in the world. So as soon as she reached open spaces, um, it, it's as if the, uh, she is gravitating towards something else because of a particular lack and that particular lack is indicated through a reference to her uh, body parts and I would um, interpret this reference as, uh, as a associations with uh, uh, sexuality obviously because of the uh, nature of the words used there and uh, fertility and um, it's very uh, clear that Veena Masi doesn't have any children and that in itself is a big absence in her life and because she doesn't have any progeny uh, she almost gravitates back to earth and she is uh, almost giving up her life and returning to mother earth she's surrendering she's descending actually she's getting off life itself look at the repetition of the word descending 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 um, so she is um, descending in the sense that she is just going back to ground uh, zero to this um, uh, earth mother earth and uh, um, she's surrendering her body to earth itself and, and again the reference to burial is there in that uh, last phrase um, on uh, uh, in this particular extract on the slide so forcing to stand stock still her feet buried deep she's almost resisting that return back to nature but then uh, there is a gravitation uh, and that gravitation is created because of the fact that she doesn't have any um any kind of sexual fertile um, life and, and this particular life is so empty that she's going back. So this uh, um, character description is a strong uh, contrast to the other women characters that we have in this particular story. So again, uh, my questions there, as I mentioned, uh, a disturbing note is presented through the character note of uh, Veena Mercy. She, does she feel lonely? Yes, she does. Uh, does she feel the barrenness of her womb? Yes, she does feel the barrenness of the womb, which is why she wants to give up on life itself because that is the strong association, strong um, uh, you know, uh, I, I notion that we get when we read those statements. And does she feel as if she is moving towards death and, and the earth as a grave? Yes, uh, she does feel as if she is migrating towards a, a different sort of land where she wouldn't feel the heaviness of her womb. So all these uh, longings are there and funnily enough um, uh, there uh, again this character who is completely at liberty in the sense that there is nobody to control her is not happy. So um, there seems to be a suggestion that uh, 
children, um, you know, sexual life are some of the most important factors in life that will offer a woman happiness. So that suggestion seems to be also there in the story. So there, there wouldn't be a complete, uh, um, a, a complete happiness for a woman unless she has all these other, uh, other aspects uh, too for her to enjoy and nurture and care for. So um, being single even if that uh, singleness means widowhood is not a happy place uh, for a woman. So um, we have another episode in the story uh, and remember I uh, mentioned that this is not a very very tightly plotted uh, story. This is a very, very uh, loosely uh, bound, um, uh, loosely plotted story with lots of episodes in it and uh, with minor crises um, here and there uh, and all these are stitched together uh, in order to uh, offer a, a connected set of ideas about the role of women in Indian society. So um, what Ambai does uh, at a midpoint in the story is uh, offer a, a picnic as, a, uh, a, as an episode and um, this episode is important um, in terms of revealing once again the massive uh, difference uh, between men and women in terms of the roles that they play uh, in, in the context of their family. So it does reveal the status of women, it, it reveals and um, the picnic reveals um, you know the physical impact on the women in terms of the immense amount of labor that they contribute in organizing and carrying out a picnic. And then uh, we do also get a lot of uh, embedded narratives about um, the past of some of the women. So this uh, picnic becomes a kind of a, a, a kind of a touchstone in fact to talk about multitudes of um, w multitudes of lifestyles especially lifestyles that have been affected by this uh, gender disparity now uh, this is how the picnic is talked about um, the plan was for all the relations to make a trip to the lake together for 20 people a hundred puris with enough potato and tomato chutney, a uh, hundred sandwiches, things to munch, bottles of milk for the babies, hot water in flasks, a portable stove to cook um, hot pakoras in the evening, oil, besan, onions, uh, chili powder, salt and green peppers for the budgies. So look at the scale of um, the amount of food that they need to prepare and pack uh, in order for a, a big family, a family of extended relations and, 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 uh, and all these people to have a, a, an enjoyable time um, uh, on a picnic near the lake. So uh, 100 sandwiches and 100, somebody has to knead all these doughs, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, all these doughs, somebody has to prepare the sandwiches, somebody has to fill the uh, uh, milk bottle, somebody has to, uh, you know, uh, prepare the hot water. And, and it, it is a, a big operation and it is a logistical uh, you know uh, terror in fact um, when, when I first read this particular passage I was really amazed by the amount of uh, you know energy and uh, uh, hard work that would uh, go into uh, a preparation of this scale and uh, we have uh, one particular character who is uh, introduced to us at, in, in, in greater detail in the context of uh, this particular picnic and um, she is Radha Babiji and she is married to one of the sons of Papaji and Gigi and her husband is Gopal, um, uh, Gopal Vaisab, that's how he is introduced. So uh, Radha is busy packing, apparently that task has been given to her and she's muttering and packing and, and she does uh, the packing for the children, her own children, she does the packing for the children of the other women uh, in this household who are, who are all meeting during this vacation and um, she is uh, preparing as I said the milk bottles for the babies um, in the family and and she is also uh, packing for the adults for such as the blankets that they have to use while they uh, while they're out there and uh, she has to think about spare clothes for the children the biscuits and, and each and every 
ch uh, child has a particular favorite and she has to make sure that everybody has their own favorites and if some child especially her child if if he or she doesn't get to have that particular biscuit and the child would cry and her husband would not be happy and she has to think about the milk powder different kinds of milk powder that she has to pack and the plastic bags to put the clothes in the spoons and the blankets and again these details are spelt out, uh, you know, um, uh, painstakingly by Ambai in this particular story. And I tell you that the amount of details that you read in terms of, of all these uh, domestic stuff and in terms of all the food items, it really amazes you, uh, the, the extensive detailing. So um, Radha Babiji is involved in this process and it becomes uh, very clear um, that um, it, it's the women who struggle with this uphill task. And uh, what is her uh, educational context? She is a genius at maths. Um, that's what the narrative tells us. And uh, she could have gone for higher education, but her family didn't prefer it that way. And um, the narrative tells us that because her family would not consent to her taking up further studies in the subject, she was working in a bank in quite a high position. So, um, and, uh, and, and we got to remember that her husband is a doctor, Gopal is a doctor. So uh, even though she is excellent at mathematics, um, she doesn't get the chance to pursue higher education and she doesn't reach the maximum that she could in terms of her educational trajectory. And uh, she, um, compromises and then um, you know uh, compromises her uh, mental aptitude um, and then uh, she finds a work uh, in a bank and even in that uh, context she is in quite a high position because of her caliber so this is the educational professional context for Radha Babaji and um, we get this uh, tiny uh, tidbit of information while um, you know uh, Amba is detailing all the work that she uh, does. So uh, what what is her other um, role in her family? Um, it is that uh, she shoulders the responsibility of the children. Uh, in fact, the entire responsibility of raising the children seems to be on her shoulders. And, um, and, and when the women are preparing in Papaji's household to, um, for this particular picnic, um, Radha asks Meenakshi uh, to um, give the children a bath. And um, you know, uh, Meenakshi says uh, that um, you know, let them sleep for a while. If, they, if we wake them up this early, they will not be very happy the children uh, can be allowed to sleep a little later and perhaps uh, Gopal can give them a bath so this is the question that Meenakshi asks why um, doesn't Gopal Bhai Sahib give them their baths later and this is the response of um, uh, Radha Babiji and she says oh yes he'll bath them keep thinking that so it's a lot of sarcasm um, in that uh, couple of statements, oh yes, think about, you keep thinking that that will never happen. And um, in, in behind the sarcasm is also a, a, a little bit of bitterness there uh, about the fact that the husband will not pitch in. And um, not only does she have um, you know, the responsibility of the children, she also has the responsibility of cooking um, the food at, uh, at home, in her home in Jodhpur. And she's also entirely responsible for that. And we do get a, 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 a tiny flashback, uh, which explains to the readers um, the state of affairs at their particular, uh, at their home in Jodhpur. So um, all the domestic chores, including ironing, for everyone is, um, you know, uh, has fallen on Radha Babaji's so shoulders. So she earns uh, her clothes, her husband's clothes, her children's clothes in order to prepare them for uh, this particular picnic. And she does look haggard. And in fact, she doesn't have time for herself. So um, all these becomes very, very uh, apparent as we read the, uh, the details and the, the run up to the picnic itself. Okay. And 
what is brought out uh, in that particular exchange between uh, Meenakshi and Radha is this uh, mm, fact that even during the vacation, uh, even when he is at leisure, even when he is enjoying himself uh, in, uh, outside of his professional context, he does not help in domestic shows, he does not share um, the responsibility either of the children or of the uh, duties in the kitchen. And, um, why why doesn't he do that because it is everybody's understanding that the domestic household management is the women's job it's the women's prerogative it's their privilege it's their um, traditional responsibility something that they have been doing for ages together since time immemorial and um, this notion that uh, 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 this notion that it's the it's the women who are supposed to take care of the kitchen and the children is um, subtly questioned by Kishin and um, uh, how does he do that because uh, he, he does that in the in, an, in a sort of an embedded narrative there is a brief embedded narrative in the story a, a mini flashback which uh, gives us a window a, a glimpse of um, the life of Gopal and Radha in, in Jodhpur. So, this is that flashback um, and this is Gopal telling Kishan and uh, Meenakshi uh, what, um, you know, what uh, are the difficulties that he faced if his wife was not around. He says that uh, I was completely helpless, I could not so much as stand in the kitchen and you cannot even get servants over here. Can you imagine what it was like Kishan? I could not even stand in the kitchen long enough to make a cup of tea. Kishan said quietly, isn't Radha Babiji who also has a job at the bank cooking in the same kitchen at this very moment? Certainly, so what? After all, women are used to it. So, um, Gopal tells Kishan um, the difficulty that he had faced when he had to do certain tasks in the kitchen when Radha was away on uh, uh, on certain bank work and uh, he had to take care of the kitchen and he says that he I could not even stand uh, for a brief time even even to make a cup of tea that's that, that, that does not take a lot of time in a kitchen so uh, it was that in that difficult the kitchen was um, almost uh, a place that one could not be there for a long time because um, he is talking about Jodhpur and Jodhpur is very very hot uh, extremely hot uh, uh, most of the year. So, um, and Kishan asks uh, very quietly is not rather doing um, uh, some sort of kitchen work at this very moment when we are um, enjoying a, a, a drink we are, when we are enjoying this chat and he, he does not bat an eyelid Gopal does not bat an eyelid so what after all women are used to this terrible inconvenience the, the, the pain the struggle that comes with um, you know working in a, uh, a physically uncomfortable kitchen. So, uh, what are the uh, interpretations that we can draw in uh, from this particular uh, conversation and, and these are some of the interpretations that I have uh, jotted down. Being helpless is natural, being helpless is natural, uh, it is almost as if um, Gopal is proud of the fact that he is helpless. In fact, there is a repetition there because uh, he says I could not uh, so much a stand in, I could not even stand in. Um, so, uh, he, that is repeated and the repetition uh, highlights or reinforces the fact that um, men cannot be in the kitchen even for the briefest of the moments uh, and um, it becomes intolerable as a space. It is a very interesting idea, an intolerable space for the men, why does it become intolerable for Gopal and not for Radha uh, um, and that is a that is a question that we, ne we need to ask, we should ask because uh, men are not used to, men such as Gopal are not used to being in difficult spaces and kitchen is a difficult space as we have seen in this uh, particular story and the first kitchen that we um, uh, introduced to in Papaji's home is also uh, very very inconvenient and physically harmful for the women especially for the feet because they have to stand in flooded waters and here it is the opposite here we have the heat the extreme heat uh, which uh, in which uh, rather cooks on a daily basis and, um, and Gopal thinks that is ok that is perfectly natural perfectly natural for her. 
so being helpless is natural for men like Gopal and being helpful is natural for men uh, for uh, women like Radha. So the kitchen space means two different things for the two sexes. For one, it's intolerable. For the other, it's a space in which they work and feed the people who depend on them. So being inconvenienced, being in terribly a harmful situation, not only inconvenienced, being in physically harmful spaces. So it's a harmful space. Extreme heat is harmful, just as a flooded uh, kitchen is harmful for women. So extreme, um, you know, uh, uh, temperatures and, and, and um, uh, climactic conditions and weather situations is harmful for everybody. Not only for the women, it's harmful for everybody. And uh, and women are uh, exposed to these conditions uh, on a daily basis in order to help the other um, the other half the the men to survive and uh, it's very very uh, uh, interesting it's almost um, a touching to see that uh, it's Kishin who questions the disparity not Meenakshi the, the you know the first time in the first episode we had Meenakshi question um, the disparity the the inconvenience in the kitchen and here uh, Kishin questions the uh, the discrimination that Radha Babaji suffers the inequality that is practiced in Gopal's home in Radha's home and uh, it's very, very um, uh, appropriate that uh, we have a man question um, the disparity because it's high time that the men also woke up to this uh, discrimination and Ambai makes uh, uh, an architect question all these, um, you know, uh, double standards in uh, Indian society in the context of a kitchen in a corner of the house. Uh, thank you for watching. I'll continue the next session.